it begins at the households. You know, you're, you're in your house, you're putting your trash and your recyclables out. Now with the single stream recycling, your recyclables, your papers mixed with your containers, there's no sorting, no plastic bags, loose in one bin. So generally, if you participate in a curbside program, about once a week, you put your trash out, you put your, you put your recyclables out. Once a recycling truck comes and picks up those recyclables, they come to our recycling center in Utica. The truck drives over scales that are actually in the ground because we need to weigh the truck and see how much it weighs with the recyclables in it. Because after the truck dumps the recyclables, they go over the scales again so that we can weigh the truck out so that we know how many recyclables were brought to our facility. So once the truck is weighed, it drives to our recycling center tipping floor, which is where the trucks will essentially tip up and dump recyclables onto the floor. From that point, a loader picks up the recyclables and loads them into a large container. In that container, there is a drum feeder that is rotating and it's feeding material over the first conveyor that will bring the material into the recycling system. The drum feeder feeds the material onto the conveyor evenly and it makes its way up to the single stream processing system where it, all of those mixed recyclables will enter the first stages of sorting. The conveyor goes through our first room called the pre-sort where we have sorters that are looking for shredded paper that's in plastic bags, any trash that was placed in the recyclables, and also uh, any other type of film plastics and plastic bags that need to be removed before they enter the single stream system. Once the material flows through the pre-sort, it drops down and hits our cardboard screens. The screens are like rotating discs that are they're very large and they're rotating fast. And what happens is as the material hits those discs, the discs push the corrugated cardboard over the top while all of the smaller paper and containers fall through. So now that the cardboard has been sorted out, we're left with paper, mixed paper, our containers, and glass. That material goes up a conveyor and it goes through what we call the post sort. And at the post sort, we have sorters in there that are pulling out any cardboard that made it through the, the first screens and also any trash that's still making it through. Once the material goes through the post sort, it enters what's essentially the first glass breakers. And these screens are different than the cardboard screens. They're different sizes, they're different widths apart. As those discs are rotating, the glass is breaking and falling underneath and paper is being pushed over the top and containers are falling through. The material travels through these screens. The glass is sorted out, the containers, plastic, metal, aluminum, those are sorted out. As the paper that has been sorted out through those screens goes down a conveyor and enters what we call the sorting room. In the sorting room we have two lines and we have sorters that are sorting out any garbage that may still be in the recyclables, any cardboard that still has made it through, and also um, any containers that made it through. Once the paper goes through the sorting room, it's then put into its own container where it will eventually be baled. We're left with our plastics and metal and aluminum. The metal, as it's going along the conveyor, a magnet is pulling out metal lids and any metal containers such as your soup cans and things like that. At that point, they go up a conveyor and we have optical sorters. The sorters use infrared light to detect which type of plastic uh, the container is. They look for PET plastic and HDPE natural. PET is like your soda and water bottles. The HDPE is like your milk jugs. And what happens is that light will detect that type of plastic and then air will then blow different the, the PET or if it's the HDPE into its own container and re recover those materials. 
So once our PET and HDPE and metal are then sorted out from this group of containers, we're left with three through seven plastics and also our aluminum. This material comes down a conveyor that goes over a line where we have our sorters picking out different types of plastic. We have one sorter that's picking out uh, HDPE colored and then we have sorters that are picking out other um, three through seven plastics as well as any cartons. Milk cartons, juice cartons are also picked out of the containers at this time. What we're left with at that point is any residue, which is our non-recyclable items, and also the aluminum. Now as this material passes over the conveyor, there is an eddy current, which if you've ever tried to stick two magnets together, they repulse each other. The same type of thing happens at this point in the system. The cans are going over the conveyor, they hit that current, and aluminum is repulsed and is, goes over into its own container while the residue then falls through. So once we have all of our materials sorted out, we have our mixed paper, we have our metal, we have our different plastics, that material is held in like storage bins. And once that fills up, uh, what we do with the material is we open a door and that material will fall onto a conveyor that will bring the material and dump it into what we call a baler. We have two balers at our facility and what the baler does is produce something that is just like a farmer baling hay. Okay, we produce cubes or bales of recyclables that are much larger and way more than you know a bale of hay but essentially it's the same thing. Then wait until we get enough of each type of bale and we actually market those bales. We sell those bales to manufacturers that will take them and make them into brand new things. And with the single stream processing system and the advanced sorting equipment that we have, we're able to market a higher grade of recyclables, which in turn increases the authority revenue which allows for efficient running of our system and our other programs.